Hey, Paul here. And just in the last two or three days, uh, three different people have asked me a question about whether they should donate property that they have to their kids now or whether they should let their children inherit it when they die. So, you know, we see this a lot. Parents sometimes have some family property. They may have a camp. They may have some land. Um, not necessarily talking about the home right now, but other property. And some people just want a certain child or children to have it now or later. So they ask, you know, should I give it to them now or should I just let them inherit it? And there's, there's tax consequences. There's other tax consequences. So I boiled it down to five, you know, factors that come into play as to that factor into the decision of whether to give property to your kids now or let them inherit it when you die. Factor number one is the step up in basis. Let's say, for example, you bought a piece of property for $50,000 and now it's worth $200,000 a year. If you give that property away during your lifetime, the person that you give it to will get what's called a carryover basis. They'll get what your basis was, $50,000. So when they ultimately sell the property, they'll pay capital gains tax on everything above $50,000. If you let them inherit that property when you die, then they'll get a step up in basis. So if the value when you die is $250,000, that'll be their new basis. So when they subsequently sell it, they'll only pay capital gains tax on what they receive from the sale in excess of $250,000. Instead of having to receive uh, pay tax on everything they receive in excess of $50,000, which would have been the case if they got the donated carryover basis. So that's a big factor. Um, keep that into consideration. Another consideration, and so, so really that first factor leads many people to keep the property and let the child or the donee or the inheritor inherit it to take advantage of the step up in basis. Factor number two is worked with someone recently and there was some family property. They wanted to leave it to a daughter, but they didn't want the daughter to be able to sell it. So it gets kind of complicated when you give property to a child and you want to put a restriction on them that they can't sell it. And typically that's done through a trust and you name another trustee, it gets a little complicated. So what this person is doing is he says, you know what, I'll just keep it because there are no adverse tax consequences of them inheriting it, I'll hold on to it as long you know, as I can, as long as I'm alive, that way I know it won't ever get sold, and then I'll let it go to my child when I pass away. And you know, my child at that point may have the maturity level where, where they won't sell it because they know that's you know, what I wanted. So that's another factor. A third factor is whether the property produces income. Some land produces, um, timber or rental proceeds. So a decision of whether to donate or let someone inherit that, you know, you have to take that future income into account. Some people will say, well, I'm not going to donate that property because I want that income and I need that income. Well, keep the property then. Some people will say, you know what, my child is in a lower income tax bracket, so I want him to have the property now. Let him get the income, let him pay tax at lower rates. So maybe that would be a factor to actually donate the property, although go back and take a look at the step up and basis factor from factor number one. So number three is income generated. Number four is, you know, we hear people say, I've got this property. I just want my child to have it now. And sometimes that's enough of a reason to just give it to them. I just want them to have it. I don't want it anymore. I want them to have it. I want them for whatever reason to have it. Uh, so I want to donate it to them. So uh, sometimes that's enough of a reason to do the donation. And then factor number five, the last one, is the estate and gift tax considerations that result from a donation or an inheritance of property. Everybody has that confused. So let's say, for example, go back to the example where the gentleman has um, property that he bought for $50,000 is now worth $200,000. He says, do I keep it? Let him or or let him inherit it when I die. And he might mistakenly think that if I give him that property now, it's worth more than $14,000, he's gotta pay tax, but he doesn't. So when someone makes a gift and it is in excess of the 
annual exclusion amount, which here in 2017 is $14,000. See, if, if the gentleman donated a $200,000 piece of property um, to someone, then he donated $186,000 more than $14,000. Some people think some, somebody owes some tax. But no, really all that happens is the, the donor, the man who originally owned the property, he has a $5.5 million estate tax exemption. So by making a $186,000 taxable gift, nobody owes any tax. The gentleman just used $186,000 of his $5.5 million, actually $5.49 million estate tax exemption. So now when the gentleman dies, he can only leave $5.3 something uh, or 5.2 something million dollars of assets free of estate tax. So for most people, the whole estate tax, estate and gift tax considerations don't even come into play when you're determining whether you know, to make a gift like that. Maybe a sixth and kind of bonus factor that goes into whether property should be transferred if there's a worry that someone may need long-term you know, long care Medicaid, if they go into a nursing home later, that might be a factor that would warrant transferring the property now because really to protect that property, you have to transfer the property out of your name and stay out of the nursing home for five years. And then once the five years is up, that property is home free and, and Medicaid would never you know, force a person to sell the property in order to pay you know, nursing home costs. So that's that's a factor that might warrant giving it away. So really six factors, the step up in basis often gets people to keep the property, let the children inherit it if the step up in basis. I don't want them to sell it. If I give it to them, well, that might warrant keeping it instead of giving it to them now where they might sell it. It generates income. Well, who knows whatever the dynamics are. You may want to keep that income. You may want the income to go to the donee or the child. So that's a factor. Um, I just want them to have it is a factor that warrants giving it to them now. And for estate and gift tax considerations, it doesn't matter because people have a five and a half million dollar estate and gift tax exemption that you can use during your life or when you die. Most people, it doesn't matter. Even if you make a large gift, it doesn't have any, any, any real tax consequences where someone would have to pay tax as a result of the transfer or the inheritance. So that's a summary. There's always more to it than that. There's property tax, there's other family dynamic considerations and all of that. So, um, but those are, for starters, a few of the discussion points that really need to be addressed when you're trying to determine whether to transfer a piece of property to an heir or to a child now or let them inherit it when you pass away. Have a good one. Have a good one.